Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Glenn Wittenberg here. Uh, today, I'm, a quick video on a small upgrade I did to my home NAS. Um, I went ahead and put the uh, Super Micro AOC uh, SAS2 LP MV8. So that's AOC SAS L, I'm sorry, 2 LP MV8. It's the uh, add on card from Super Micro. It's the uh, SAS SATA um, adapter. I think it's a PCIe 2. Um, capable of 600 uh, megabytes uh, per channel, uh, megabits a second per channel. So, uh, pretty nice card. Um, it's got two SAS SATA connectors on them, each capable of doing uh, four uh, four individual SATA drives, so a total of eight. Um, in my home NAS, I uh, only have four drives in it now. Well, I have five, but four that I use uh, for a ZFS RAID. Um, so, this is a non RAID card. It's just a JBOD, right? Just a bunch of disk. Um, so I'm going to let ZFS do all the rating for me. Uh, so I thought this was a perfect fit. Um, it was just over like $111 shipped to my door from Amazon. Um, it came pretty well packaged. Um, it had some foam wrapped around it, bubble wrap. Um, it came on the cards. You can see there a picture of it. It came with the uh, low profile uh, on it, and I went ahead and put the uh, uh, the full height on it because uh, my uh, case, uh, I think it's the uh, Node 304. Uh, it does take a full height on it as well. So went ahead and did that and uh, got it in the box and got it booted up and uh, things are looking pretty good. I'm uh, just going to show you a couple pictures here um, of what I had and then I'm going to take you over and go ahead and SSH into the box and uh, kind of give you a view of uh, some some uh, performance figures on that. This picture you can see uh, the card that I have it installed uh, in the only slot on the board. And the slot happens to be a PCIe 16, um, PCIe 3 uh, X16 slot. Of course, it'll you know take any any card that or lower uh, in it. So um, it did snap in pretty good. Um, you know things are pretty tight in this case. Um, it's a very small case. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted, small and quiet. And uh, that's, that's definitely what I got. Um, it does fit in there. I did a little bit of cable management and uh, took some things off the heat sink there so it would. Uh, you know, so it would stay cool. Um, it does get a little warm on the heat sink there when it's running, uh, but nothing, you know, extremely too hot there. So uh, I'm, when the case goes over the, over the top of it and down the side there, there's a vent, matter of fact, right off uh, on the same side as that heat sink. So I think a little bit of heat will come out of there as well. Uh, and I do have the uh, big, big exhaust fan in the back, and I got a couple fans uh, in the front of the case that blow through the drives. And then I've got that, uh, you know, monster CPU. Uh, heat sink and fan on there as well, blowing air. So um, things do uh, stay pretty cool in there. And I, I'll show you that later on in the video uh, when I get into uh, the LM sensors and uh, HDD temp and stuff like that, how things work uh, under a whole load. So so there it is. The card's installed. Again, not a whole bunch of room, um, uh, but it does fit and it does function. Just going to run through a couple other picks with you guys. This is on the uh, other side. Uh, you know, that obviously doesn't have the uh, uh, PCIe slot on it. Uh, things are a lot less crowded over there because the power supply doesn't exit out over there with all the cabling. Um, so it's pretty simplistic on this side. You can kind of get a little view of the uh, cooler that's on there as well, a little bit better. So uh, um, it's a pretty big one. It does fit in the case, and it does keep the CPU nice and cool. Those are white brackets hanging down from the top. Um, I've got three of those brackets. Each bracket can hold two hard drives. And so that one you're looking at right there, the first one holds my uh, Samsung 850 Evo 128-gig uh, SSD drive in there. That's what I put my uh, OS and boot on, and uh, I use that for my uh, my Plex uh, um, encode uh, directory as well. Oh, so if it has to encode files and stuff out in the temp directory, um, it doesn't have any lag or anything like that. It's just going to the SSD. And then the other two bays... Uh, the center one and on the other side of uh, of what you're looking at there, uh, they have two drives in them each, and uh, those are Western Digital uh, Red NAS three terabyte drives in there. So, um, and again, that's what I use for my uh, ZFS uh, mirrored striped or Ray 10 uh, pool. So for the rest of these picks, um, you know, I'm just going to show you the front of the case, uh, the back of the case. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the BIOS of the uh, controller. It runs on the Marvel chipset. 
Um, you just do a control M as it's booting up, and you can get into the BIOS of these things. Um, I can just go through and show you. Uh, I changed just a couple things. I think it was, no, matter of fact, I only think I changed one thing, and that was the uh, time that it took to uh, seek the drives uh, before they before they loaded. It was set at, I don't know, like 5 or 10 or some ungodly number, and it was taking forever to boot. So I knocked it down to just a couple seconds per drive, and they just come right up. So it's a lot quicker boot when you do that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and then so after I'm done showing you the pictures, we'll jump into the video of me uh, SSHing, uh, SSHing, <laughs> is that how you say it, uh, into my NAS box and kind of going through a couple things for you. What we're looking at here is on my uh, PC Windows 10 desktop you know, workstation here. Um, I've got several uh, PuTTY windows open into the NAS. And I uh, kind of wanted to show you how things were running and my temperatures and whatnot that were going on in there. I know things were pretty cramped, uh, not a lot of room for air to move around. But um, I do have the uh, two front case fans, the big rear exhaust fan, and then I've got that uh, big CPU uh, cooler in there as well um, and that you know so things uh, you know the, the air does get moved around quite a bit um, so what I've done here is I've got into my uh, NAS and I run a tool called stress and then my core count is four so I'm maxing out uh, four cores all four cores of my CPU and you can see that up here right one two three four and they're all 100% this has been going on for probably 15-20 minutes and I also have, uh, I'm using Watch on HDD, HDD temp, my hard drive temperature. And I'm also doing Watch on sensors that I have installed as well, uh, LM underscore sensors. So you can see that uh, my hard drives are very, very cool. They're all, uh, all four of the, of the Western Digitals are 33 degrees. Uh, the Samsung SSD that's in there is 31 you know, Celsius, right? So uh, everything's looking really good there, very stable. Uh, I come over to my uh, core uh, CPU cores, and you can see that even 15, 20 minutes of running, uh, it, you know, maxed out 100%. I'm still in the very low 50s. As a matter of fact, a couple of them bounced down into the 40s once in a while. So, uh, very happy with that, right? I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even pushing 55 at 100%. You know, uh, and like I said, it's probably been about 20 minutes now uh, since this has been running. So, I just kind of want to give you a heads up on that, and uh, let you know everything's running cool. Uh, very happy with the performance, even though it's a really tight fit. Uh, things to, uh, things seem to be running very cool inside and uh, operating 100%. Okay, so now I want to show you my uh, scrub speed uh, that I have on my NAS. And uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, uh, let's see, pull. Whoops, get the title in there. Sorry about that. status. You can see I only have one pool. It's called My Raid, and it is uh, uh, mirrored stripes, uh, basically a RAID 10. So let's go ahead and do a, a scrub on that. All 
tonight. That's kicked off and usually uh, takes a few seconds to kind of initialize and the, the times to all uh, come into sync here. And then they stay steady for, you know, 90, uh, about 96% of the scrub, the end of the scrub there. Uh, all my numbers are pretty, pretty much the same. Well, whoops, case A. There we go. Take a look at what we got. You can see there, um, it's just started to scrub. I've scanned uh, 7.44 gig, and I'm running at 246 uh, megabytes a second uh, on that uh, with the new controller in there. So, uh, not too bad. Uh, 252, and it just kind of keeps bumping up there. The other day when I ran this, I got up into, uh, I think it was 2, I want to say 270. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was 250 on the scrub and uh, 225 on the transfer. Maybe that was it. Maybe I was wrong on that. I apologize. But uh, that's not too bad because each of these Western Digitals are supposed to do, you know, about 125, right? Eh, some people say 150, but I've never seen a single... Uh, 5400 RPM WD NAS drive ever do that fast. So uh, if I'm looking at 125 per drive, and I got two of these, uh, you know, striped out, and I'm mirroring the stripes, right, which has no effect, but um, the speed comes in uh, with, with, with the with the striping. So uh, you know, 125, 125 is 250. I'm getting I'm getting that plus just a you know a couple meg more. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and then the file transfer that I do from SSD onto the ZFS pool and then back from the ZFS pool back to the SSD. Um, that takes a little bit of a performance hit, but uh, you know, I think that's some overhead of the uh, R-Sync protocol and whatnot that I use and the progress that I, that I look at. Uh, maybe if I used a different tool, um, I could get some, you know, some better readings or something like that, but uh, still very happy with that, uh, you know, with my transfer speed being on and off the uh, Z pool uh, onto my SSD at uh, you know well over 200 so uh, pretty happy with that